Hi, uh, good afternoon for those connecting from Europe and good morning for those in North America. My name is Marcus Alvarez and I am the global head of credit insurance ratings for DBRS Morningstar. Today, we would like to discuss about the current state of the cyber insurance market and how small and medium enterprises or SMEs can implement protection strategies to manage their increasing exposure to cyber risk while enhancing their insurability. So cyber insurance, also known as cyber risk insurance or cyber liability insurance, is a specialty insurance product designed to safeguard organizations against the effects of cyber attacks and hacking threats. I think there is no day uh, going without the public knowing about a major cyber attack or cyber incident. However, I, ha I have to say that for every cyber incident that you see in the mainstream media, there are hundreds of cases that are not in the public domain, and some of them are quite large. To talk about cyber insurance and how SMEs can better protect themselves against cyber risk, uh, we have today Alan Abreu, European Cyber Manager and member of the underwriting team at Box Insurance. Alan has almost two decades of experience in the insurance market, working for some of the largest uh, global names in both the underwriting and broker side of the business. Box's mission is to provide the most effective combination of cyber threat protection, prevention, and cyber insurance coverage for SMEs and homes. So, Alan, welcome to this webinar, and thank you for your time today. Thank you, Marcos, and thank you, DBR, as Morningstar, for the, for the invitation. Happy to be here. Thanks, Alan. Let's have some fun for the next uh, 20, 25 minutes. Sure. Uh, and I would like to remind the audience that uh, you can type in your questions in the box uh, on the website of uh, Bright Talk, and we will try to answer as, as much as possible, as many as possible of them at the end of, of the uh, webinar. So, Alan, let's 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 begin. Uh, I think we we can start a conversation by explaining uh, the audience what a cyber attack or a cyber incident is, and how it can affect uh, SMEs. Sure. Um... Probably it might be uh, good, good to understand that might be from an insurance perspective, it might be some kind of differences, but probably like a, uh, from a general perspective, like a uh, cyber attack can be any any malicious activity that can disrupt your, disrupt, delete, or, or um, uh, modify your data and, and, and your systems. That's that's pretty much from, from an incident, uh, from an uh, insurance perspective, you may have like, Different uh, uh, terms, which which has as uh, developed in the in the in, in the last maybe 10, 10 years. But you have, in short, you have things that cover like uh, uh, threats from from third parties and from insiders. So this is probably a good 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 starting point because we always talk about cyber mm -hmm. attacks, but cyber insurance is not only for cyber attacks. So and I, and, I, and I believe that cyber insurance is, is has traditionally been part of uh, of the financial lines on the underwriting side on the insurance company side and also uh, linked to DNO in, in, in some cases. Um, but I would like to follow on this and so given your direct contact with the cyber insurance market, can you briefly discuss the most common type of cyber incidents in the current environment? What what are you seeing lately in, in terms yeah. especially for SMEs? Absolutely. Uh I would say that ransomware has been at the top of the of the list. Uh, probably then everything related to fraud or crime. That's like CEO fraud. That's probably the two 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 top of the list. But lately, uh, DDoS attack. So you have seen uh, like a trend, of a few a few attacks. So, and also it's less less frequent with like insiders attacks, which is less less frequent but more painful. What are the main features of those type of cyber incidents? I mean, you, you, you mentioned the DDS, DDoS attack. So what is that and, and how is that different from an, an insider attack? Yeah, sure. Pro uh, probably a, a ransomware attack, it's something that can um, um, uh, does not allow you to have access to your data, to your systems. So from, a, from a business perspective, this is a big, big problem. So you you can you can keep 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 running your your business. So this is uh, this is something that is 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 happening. So this is like the main characteristic of a, a, a ransomware attack. Um, Crime it has like different perspective, different version of, of, of crime. You have CEO fraud, someone trying to decept you, 
like impersonation. This is like the main risk. Trying to uh, be someone else, you you um, to try to get your money. That's that a, fin a direct financial loss. That is that impacts a lot a lot uh, SMEs. And then you have uh, DDoS attacks, which uh, it's like tons of tons of attacks to your to your to your system that again impacts the availability of of the, your systems. And then is they the, from a insider perspective, someone that's already in maybe with a lot of information or key information that's something that can be be harmful for the for the company and and what is the magnitude of, of cyber risk i mean when we see all of these attacks in the press of course we tend to see a cyber incident on very large organizations private and public but um i mean is the threat as real as we see it in the in the mainstream media, um, or is it bigger? I mean, it is. It it it's it's different. The perspective from a large risk perspective, like listed company with tons of of of, of perspective of risk vectors. That's that's of course that that's a challenge from that perspective. Um, from the SME is that probably they have like. The same risk, the kind of same risk at the end is the, the continuity of the business. At the end, that is probably from both perspectives, that's the what can 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 cause. Okay, thanks. So there has been a lot of noise uh, in the insurance market during the past year regarding the insurability of cyber risk uh, with some players. Some some insurance, some large insurance names in the market have uh, publicly stated, though cyber is uninsurable, is just uh, uh, too risky for us, and in some cases they have reduced underwriting capacity in the cyber market. What can you tell our audience today about the state of the cyber insurance market? Do you see this trend continuing going forward? I mean, this is probably probably something that concerns a lot for when you write large risk. Of course, it's because all the the impact from a financial perspective it could could be huge. I mean, media you can Google it and they have, have found tons of uh, information about it. And probably from an underwriting perspective, the challenge is here to try to understand that. And even if you get closer to to a, a comprehensive or a holistic perspective of the of the risk. Uh, no one can guarantee that you will be always fully protected. So, so like impact in your in your PNL from an insurance perspective can be can be real world dangerous. Even even big premiums like the whole the year, probably last year, uh, premium has has probably had one year and a half has has increased. That had that has helped, but even that that's a, that's a risk from a large. From the from the large risk space, but probably from the SME space, I think there's a there's an opportunity to to do things differently. And in terms of pricing, I mean, we we talk about capacity. In terms of pricing, what is the current trend in this market? I I have seen uh, it it may varies from from jurisdictions. My varies from North America and even a specific countries. It may it may vary, but like generally speaking, a big big broker has already informed about that. More, it has some like um, stability where we are okay. seeing in the market from from that. It still, might be might from a within a hard market, but it seems that we are in a transition. I don't know how long it's going to take, but we mm -hmm. might be living in that in that uh, transition. Okay. And from an SME perspective, what, what kind of cyber insurance protections are available in the market at this time? Uh, what is typically not covered, for example? Can we discuss yeah. a bit about war exclusions, for instance? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, generally, generally speaking, you can find in a, in a, in a cyber insurance, you can have uh, services to to help you mitigate your risk or try to offer you some visibility how how mature you are that's uh tons of services you can you can find there then you can find uh first body covers like uh, a hacker damage something that uh, all the expenses uh um you have 
in order to recover your data or the access to your system. That's a, that's a key key cover. Then would be a business interruption. Interruptions is absolutely key. Within business interruption, you may have two versions depending of your of your carrier, from the um, dependent or or just simply your IT or cloud provider, and then you have your own systems. This is something important to take into account. You know, especially a broker might be a good suggestion just to understand the kind of systems your client has in order to check that the policy is what the client needs. And then you have from a liability perspective, like different 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 covers. Um, and, and from an exclusion perspective, of course, war this is it's it's is the main as the main one as we are living. You know, Joyce has said has released a uh, different version of the of the war exclusion. So you may have that that's a concern uh, that it's something from my point of view that it's it's looking to add some uh, sustainability of all the of the cyber insurance business. This is uh, everyone involved in this market is is what we are looking for. So you see coverage is evolving over time. Is that something I you, have, you have already I, seen? Yeah, I, I think as we as as other other uh, companies are 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 joining, especially in the SME space, for sure, that's part of the good good side of 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 having having more more markets involved to have new new covers, to have different services, uh, uh, like uh, customized solutions. That's something I I, I see that is is happening. Mm. Okay. So again, I would like to remind the audience that you can type your questions in, in the box uh, inside the website of Bright Talk, and we will answer them at the end of the talk. Alan, um, it would be great if you can run the audience uh, through, let's say, a, a post-mortem of, of a cyber incident or, or a cyber event, what an SME should do right after being attacked or while being attacked what they can do to to uh, to mitigate risk during this critical time or cost at this point yeah absolutely uh to avoid any delays that's that's absolutely key to act as as quick as possible because it's not a matter of uh how you do it so it's more how you how quick you respond to that the way you respond it's absolutely critical. Probably uh, things you I, I I suggest to take I've seen in the past is, for instance, like to have proper backups. It's it's absolutely critical, and try to avoid not deleting the logs backups. Logs are small. Uh, it's it's information that is key that is produced by a system that allows forensics teams to understand better what happened. So that's absolutely key to understand. So uh, that's 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 uh, that's important. And if there's any any plan B, to try to uh, implement uh, implement that plan as soon as possible to try to, to contain all the all the all the measures that you made that. that. If you have a cyber insurance, of course, that that would allow you to have access to 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 all that, to mitigation services, mitigation covers that might be a blank check that you can access as long as, as it makes sense to mitigate and reduce the loss. That's that's what one of the big benefits from having cyber insurance be, beyond accessing uh, different vendors that can that can uh, provide you a good good service. In, in the traditional and all property and casualty business, insurance companies, they would underwrite a policy and they, they won't be in contact again with the client until there is a claim, if there is a claim, so that they can process this payment. Do you see insurance companies now becoming also consultants, like providing consultant services to their insured clients in cyber? Absolutely, absolutely. I've seen that. I've I've seen that a lot. This is this is where probably uh, the the this is a uh, big opportunity for the for the insurance business, and this is probably what the client is looking for. Uh, not only cover cover, I need a cover to 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 cover to transfer my risk, but I need some help to try, especially to understand my risk, and take and take all the all the, all the measures that I that that I need to to contain that. 
Okay. So this brings me to my next, next question. So what strategies can SMEs implement to manage their exposure to cyber risk and improve their insurability? As, absolutely. That's something I, I, I love to try help clients uh, to understand the risk and help them to go through all the the, the transfer process. Uh, first of all, my my suggestion would be to understand your risk. That's that's a key. It's a simple advice, but it's something that it's absolutely key before going going to the into the different protections they might have in in, in, in place um, an insurance broker it might might be very very helpful to to uh, for clients to understand the 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 risk they face within this cyber world um, another one is to be to be informed to be to be updated that's absolutely that's absolutely key if you have a uh, your your main system has has a vulnerability if you're not informed you will be you will be in problems. So that's absolutely key to be to be informed, to understand the different threats that the that the cyber uh, cyberspace has. Um, another simple simple suggestion would be to know what's the your your inventory. How many how many uh, computers do you have? How many laptops do you have? Uh, uh, what's the kind of software is running on each of them? That's absolutely key because if you control that that's the that's actually the scope the scope of the risk so if you if you still allow any kind of software that will be your your uh the way cyber criminals to to get in so you need to understand what you have in 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 your cover who can connect to the to your to your system is that allowed even if you're allowed bring your own device that's a, something absolutely fine that's part of the world but you need to control that risk that's absolutely absolutely key. Then there will be backups, backups as absolutely. But if, if what's the best backup policy? I, I would say the one that fits the best to your risk, to your business model. Is is uh, a company that that runs an e-commerce platform would likely need to uh, backup very often, but uh, probably a manufacturing company might not or or and, and another kind of company. Uh, probably things to to share experience within the SME space. Even if you if you connect a hard drive to your to your computer, that's absolutely fine. Avoid avoid uh, keeping that permanently connected because because there's a risk. Hackers already know that that's the moment to just uh, uh, conduct a, a ransomware attack because it might be the most critical. A moment for you, so it it uh, it won't allow you to get access to your backup or your your information within your your laptop or your or your desktop. So to have an additional copy is absolutely critical. So it, it is there's there's a rule that there are, there are different rules, but you need to uh, uh, backup frequently as 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 frequent as 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 suitable for your for your business to have two different kind of 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 media to have the same to have two two backups in the same hard drive if there's a problem in both you'll have a problem so so if you have like different kind of of media or or uh, places where to back up that's absolutely fine and try to have uh, an offline or an, an upside backup. That's absolutely key. Also to test those backups. It's 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 important. If they don't if if you don't test them frequently, you you back up, but then if you're not testing, you probably won't even be able to 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 recover. To protect your your access, that's absolutely important. Absolutely, uh, that's 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 uh, especially after COVID, we were just uh, uh, previously previously uh, dis discussing how how our life changed. Uh, remote access, absolutely. You uh, please enable your MFA if if possible. Add MFA. That's absolutely. Everyone within the insurance market is is asking for that. You. Please enable your MFA as long as your your system allows to to do that, or your or your VPN. 
uh, within the access where uh, your uh, Active Directory, which is a solution that uh, Microsoft provide, uh, that's uh, something to really uh, um, take care of. Uh, Active Directory is a database that allows, that connects uh, users with your resources. In other words, if someone has the key that allows to get in in all the doors in your house, that's something that can 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 be really painful for you. Will really really cause cause a lot of uh, damage to your to your business. So, what I'm saying is that try to control admin accounts, which are generally most of the times managed through through the uh, Active Directory. And then your network as well, to try to connect your network, to set up your uh, network uh, uh, properly. Have a plan B, of course, that's that's absolutely key. Test your security, that's important. You you may think that's something you have done, it's, it's absolutely key. Go to someone that knows about it, that it's an, a specialist, a, 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 a cybersecurity consultant that can confirms or not that what you're doing it's 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 is properly for your for a business and of course uh uh buy an, an, an insurance policy a cyber insurance policy because that will be try to uh, transfer all the risk that no one can guarantee that you will be 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 control and, and alan you i mean you mentioned a couple of points like inventory i mean you would surprise by how many organizations even some relatively large do not know exactly what their digital assets are. And as you said, absolutely. that's, that's, that's crucial. Yeah. And um, another point that um, I would like to re reiterate with you. Um, so it doesn't seem that, so you have a list of A, B, C, D things to do as an SME or sort of organization. It, this is an evolving field. I, I mean, hackers are becoming more and more sophisticated. So, it's not that an SME goes has a list of 20 things to do because maybe tomorrow is 25, next year is 35. So how SMEs can keep up to speed with this changing environment? So what is the, the most economically viable way for them to do that? Yeah, that's that's absolutely absolutely key. Uh, this is not a checklist because we are going all the like the approach. Even even uh, insured tech companies as as box, well, we have to change our approach. The approach you have to 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 take is like monitoring frequently, monitor your risk because that will allow you to test your risk if that's something. Even if you change your business model, COVID uh, after COVID, uh, tons of company had to add delivery as part of the services just to continue that. There was a different. Uh, aspect of your business model, you need to adapt your your probably your cover to adapt to all the circumstances you have within your business model. That's important to have a clear com conversation with your with your broker. This is what I do. This is the kind of risk I, I have, and the and the broker to ask like key key questions to understand that if there's an availability risk that they face, they have an integrity risk. All the data has been modified. Or, or confidentiality risk, or the three of them. To just just to understand, uh, understand what kind of risk you face and monitor that frequently. That's absolutely key. It's a it's an ongoing journey for everyone. Thanks, Alan. And, and as European cyber manager and member of the underwriting team at Box Insurance, how does a company like Box fit in the cyber protection landscape? And, and what is it uh, value proposition at this time? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our our goal is to help the world to be a safer place, a digital safer place. That's that's our goal. So, our approach we we saw an opportunity to just join this market to have a different approach to specialize in those risks that might be a bit difficult from 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 traditional insurance. So. This is this is where we where we uh, spend a lot of time. Our approach is it's an ongoing monitoring uh, services service for our we 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 have a strategy to predict, prevent, protect, and recover. Which recovery includes uh, insurance whenever we are allowed to. That's the our full strategy. So we this is an, an ongoing ongoing journey. We we make to help clients and SMEs to uh, have 
the easiest possible to, to protect their assets. Thanks. And Alan, to, to close this part of the webinar, how, how do you see the cyber insurance market evolving in the next few years? Uh, that's, I see a lot of a specialization, a specialization from the market, M maybe less, less uh, insurance companies around uh, within the SME space, less less companies like um, involved. Um, yeah, cost uh, a lot of uh, customized uh, solutions for the client for sure. That's something for, for me that it's that is coming. And in terms of pricing, do you see uh, cyber insurance becoming more affordable for SMEs, uh, more mainstream or it will still be a, some kind of unique product uh, that is only available for certain type of organizations. I would say it's hard to say, but from the what from the point of view, what the the cyber insurance offers, and from the potential loss they may have, I think uh, nowadays it is it is affordable. Not only from a box perspective, from from the market per, per perspective, I see for a thousand euros over a thousand dollars you may have a uh, cyber insurance depending on your profile but that's something you can you can benefit from, benefit from just getting your cyber insurance is something that probably not not everyone is is aware of that this this solution exists right okay so let, let's go into the questions from the audience we have received yeah. a, a couple uh but please okay. if there is any question just type in in the box in the Right, our website. So, Alan, one question we're getting is: Are, are there material differences in cyber risk across jurisdictions? Um, okay, good one. Um, yeah, I would say I have probably comes to my mind something that in the past happened when we were uh, like monitoring risk. Uh, very critical vulnerability. We were uh, we wanted to understand the, the exposure we were we were facing, and there were differences. Uh, between con uh, uh, countries, I remember that in Germany there, there was a specific system that they use more from an on-premises perspective. That's the one that had the, the vulnerability. And in Spain, for instance, they had they had not. They were more more cloud. So so probably I would say indeed uh, depends of uh, the technology available and the regulation that's probably something that two points that comes to to my mind that my and what my is memory. the what is the influence of uh, privacy laws in in, in terms of how cyber risk differs uh, across jurisdiction i mean especially let's say here in europe uh, gdpr is, is is a major uh, uh, part of the landscape in terms of privacy protection. So, how is that different from, let's say, North America? It depends of the of of, of the risk. It, of course, from a jurisdiction perspective, uh, from North America, that's something that uh, concerns that having all the records, how sensitive they are, how you protect them. That's absolutely a, a key a key element to take into account. In Europe, of course, we have GDPR, but uh, from an SME perspective, from my my from my underwriting perspective, that's something that uh, I'm I'm of course we ask about it, but I'm less concerned that if I if, if it's a European European mm -hmm. that might change if it's uh, if it's a large company, so they might be a bit more more exposed. But we 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 do our best to help the clients to meet on not not only with GDPR but with other different frameworks that they are uh, forced to. Sure. Fair enough. Uh, we're getting also a question about how how cyber insurance and cyber risk management can make a difference in credit ratings for SMEs. Uh, so, I mean, that since might. it's more related to, to the credit rating Maybe. aspect of the talk, so I might jump here. So, uh, I mean, from our perspective at DBRS Morningstar, uh, cyber insurance and cyber risk management, uh, is is a key component of the rating process as well, and and it's not new, by the way. It's something that we have been taking a look for some time, uh, and now as part of the ESG uh, analysis that we incorporate into our rating process, which is, I mean, the goal of this ESG tool is to 
be more transparent with the with the market, with investors, issuers about how we see certain type of risks that are categorized in this ESG area. Uh, we 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 talk, we analyze, we assess uh, cyber um, governance of this of cyber risk and uh, risk management of cyber uh, risk and companies that have suffered a cyber incident and they have not been able to properly manage that risk following an event or to prevent that event uh, might, might have a negative uh, score in their ratings, uh, um, depending on, on, on the materiality of such uh, events or uh, their risk management process. Um, relative to the size of the company, uh, so yes, I mean potentially as uh, I mean mismanagement of cyber risk can lead to lower ratings. Okay, okay. And then finally, we have a questions about attribution. So, do you think that attribution can be a major challenge for cyber insurance policies going forward? There has been a lot of uh, discussion back and forth in the industry about this particular point. Absolutely. Absolutely, I think that that would be a big, big, big challenge for for the for the industry. We don't know how's how's going to end, but that's something we absolutely need to mm. to think about it. How we how we can do that properly. Thanks. For sure. Well, we we don't have more questions from the audience, so at this point, I would like to thank you, Alan, for your time today and for your expertise on on cyber. I think it has been very uh, enlightening for the audience and for me as well in terms of uh, what is the current state of the cyber insurance market. Thank you for the invitation. Happy to be here. Thank you, Alan. Thanks. And thank you, everybody, for connecting. Bye.